Hi, yeah, I'm Paul, one of the biology teachers at Long Road. Just want to talk through a few things with you. Uh, firstly, about why do biology is an A-level. Secondly, about the summer work we want you to do before you join us in September. First thing, let's have a look at the, the team of biology people. So there's me at the top of the screen. And then going clockwise, we've got Shyster, one of our teachers, then Denise, another biology teacher, then Teresa, our technician, and Mark is the last teacher in the team. So just first we'll have a look at why do biology at A-level, and then, well, why long road? Then we'll have a look at what work is there to do between now and when you join us in September. So why do biology at A-level? First thing might be you needed to pursue a particular career. Maybe you're looking at vet, maybe you're looking at medicine or nursing or being a scientist and you say, I just need biology A-level. Second bullet point, you simply enjoy it and you're good at it. So there we are, a fantastic reason to do biology A-level. The next paragraph talks about providing a solid grounding in analytical thinking, writing reports and clear communication. Very useful life skills. You'll also want to take lab and field experiments which underpin the theoretical study. They also improve your teamwork and practical abilities. And then at the bottom, look, some A-level subjects uh, which are most often required for a range of university subjects and apprenticeships are called facilitating subjects. This makes them a good choice to keep your degree options open. Biology is a facilitating subject. Lots and lots of university courses require biology, like biology, a friend of mine went into uh, zoology at Leeds University and then became an accountant. They didn't want his biology knowledge, but they wanted the way he could think analytically and write reports and his clear communication. And those were the skills they were looking for. So it's an excellent facilitating subject. Why do biology A level at Long Road? Our results recently have been really, really good and put us in the top 10% of sixth form colleges in the country for biology. The resources we provide are really good. The support we provide is really good. So we do get excellent outcomes for our students. Let's talk a bit about the syllabus that we use, which is called EdXLA or SNAB Biology. We've done this since 2008. And we certainly wouldn't change it now. It's a really good syllabus. The students like it. The teachers really enjoy teaching it. It's got a really contemporary feel, exciting and relevant content. We'll do things in class and the kids come in the next day and say, oh, I saw that on the news last night and we have a discussion about it. And the kind of thing they'll talk about is say viruses. So when the whole COVID-19 thing kicked off, the students who do biology knew more about that than anyone else in the college because they've done about HIV and HIV is not that different to COVID-19. So uh, an understanding of HIV meant you had a clear knowledge of what COVID-19 was all about as well. Associated with that in year one, we do clinical trials. You may have touched on this at GCSE as well. Uh, there's phase one trials going on at the minute, trying to find some kind of treatment, some kind of vaccine for HIV. Um, so the students know all about that. What about this one? Heart disease kills one in three people in Britain. So having done the heart, we then move on to look at heart disease and see well exactly what does it do to you. And what about this as a uh, a big example, global warming. It's what people call an existential threat to humanity, meaning it threatens our existence. And we'll look at this in year two and say, well, what exactly is going on? Why is the climate changing? How is it changing? And what are the possible effects for us into the future? And some people are concerned that I mean, COVID-19 is having a bad effect and might kill 2% of humanity, but climate change could actually do a lot worse than that. So it's something we do need to talk about. Here's some opportunities outside of lessons. So just a few places we visited. Look, Babraham Research Institute, the Gurdon Institute, the Lab of Molecular Biology on the Addenbrooke site and AstraZeneca. And the three girls on the left, they're at Cambridge University doing a, some cutting up some DNA using some fancy enzymes. And the girls on the right are at their poster presentation evening, which we'll talk a bit more about in a moment. So what kind of work are we asking to do over the summer? Uh, first thing is, well, why? Why are we asking you to do it? You're moving from GCSE to A level, and that's quite a big step. So part of the reason for doing this is to help ease that transition. 
So the first thing we're asking you to do is all to do with skills, the kind of skills that are going to help you to start the course. It will be on our website how to do this, but essentially there's a note making thing where we're asking you to do a flow chart about atherosclerosis with some guidance. Then there's a couple of graphs to draw and analyse and a bit of maths to do as well. Then there's some suggestions for books you might like to read or courses you might like to do. All of this leading up to joining Long Road. So that's the first thing. Second thing is the research poster competition. And we have got prizes for this one. I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about that. So the idea is that you produce a poster and you might think, well, what, why am I doing this? Because this is what scientists do. When scientists go to their conferences, if you're not one of the speakers, you'll present your poster and you put your poster up and stand next to it and people come and talk to you all about it. And it'd be a really good thing for you to do to have a go at producing a scientific poster with our help. So your task, it says, look, choose a biology based topic, then research a particular issue. Finding some data is very important. The key to this really is you've got to get some data. So think of something that really interests you. Get some data, then proceed. If you can't find any data, choose something else. Let's have a look at some examples of some issues just to give you some ideas. You don't have to do these. These are just some suggestions to give you the sort of the idea of what you're expected to do. OK, first one, an environmental issue, e.g. the effect of climate change on coral reefs. So you start off talking about climate change and what's happening to coral reefs. Then you've got some data about the decline of coral reefs methods, what's being done to minimise the decline, results, data again that shows how these methods are actually working and there's some improvement. Conclusion, what do you think about the method and results? Will this be successful in the long run? I mean, is this going to work or are we going to lose all our coral reefs? And then some kind of referencing, we suggest Harvard referencing, just to say where you've got your information from. If you're more into conservation or zoology, what about something like the reintroduction of the white-tailed eagles to the Isle of Wight in England? This is a very new project. These eagles were introduced into Scotland, having been shot to extinction 100 years ago, and that's very successful. So now people are saying, well, let's try it again, but this time in England. So introduction, how long have they been extinct? Why did they become extinct? A graph showing some numbers. Methods, how, where is the reintroduction uh, going to be done? And you could compare it to Scotland and what happened there. Results, data that shows these methods are working, refer back to Scotland. And in conclusion, what you think about the method results, will the reintroduction be successful? And again, some kind of referencing. Final one, a healthcare issue. So, e.g., rapid diagnosis of antibiotic resistant bacteria. So, uh, introduction, antibiotic resistant bacteria are becoming more widespread. Let's have some data. Why is this a problem? Traditional methods of identifying bacteria versus newer rapid diagnostic methods. And then the methods, how they work. Results, data comparing traditional and new methods, data showing how rapid diagnosis improves patient outcomes. Conclusions, should the new methods be widely introduced? Other considerations, and then your referencing. So those are three really good examples you could choose from. There are others, look, you could do something in sports science or physio about particular treatments. Are they more effective than others? Something medical about new drugs or new procedures. If the COVID-19 thing is interesting you, you want to do something about that, that would be a great one to do, comparing it to other known viruses, which are pathogens to humans, anything like that. But do something that interests you, but there's got to be data to make it a really good poster. What makes a good poster? You can read these, but you know the idea that it's, it's eye catching, but it does carry good information as well. So when you're doing your poster, keep your eye on this list thinking, is mine like this? Can I tick these off? Here's an example of a poster. I'm hoping you're looking at it thinking, oh, that's, that's, that's quite decent actually. Might be surprised to know it's made by one of our students and she actually won the poster competition for which there was a photograph earlier. One of our students called Sheila did this last year and she's now off to university to study biology. And this was the prize winning poster for the whole event. So 
Um, this is the kind of thing you can aspire to do. She did hers on, on an actual experiment. We're not expecting that from you because you're going to be at home with this. And I mean, if you can do an experiment at home, that's fine. She collected her own data, but we're sort of assuming you'll, you'll need to use someone else's data. So just as a summary then, what are we asking you to do for the summer? Look on the website and there's this stuff about the skills we talked about, like drawing graphs and flowcharts and stuff. Then there's the research post competition of which the best three will get uh, a prize. And finally, just to say, we're very much looking forward to meeting you in the new academic year. So please go to our website and you'll find all the information you need for biology, uh, all the documents you need to do the summer work. Good luck with it and we look forward to seeing you very soon in September.